Ebro in the morning, Rosenberg. Laura Styles is putting makeup on as preparing for a photo shoot. Yes, of course. She's Hollywood. But uh, let's give it up for this brother right here from the Bay Area, Andre Ward. Yeah. Rock Nation. It. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, and specifically, um, how would you describe him? 20, was it 27 27 and 0? 27 and 0, Olympic gold medalist, um, one of the highest, most highly touted um, American talents of the last decade, I'd say. Mm hmm. A lot, a lot, a lot of excitement about this guy. Andy's got a big fight tickets on sale right now for a fight that you have in your hometown of Oakland. That's right. Against who? Paul Smith. Paul Smith is a tough fighter, man, from uh, the UK. He's got a big, big following over there, and I think leading up to this fight, you know, America will get, you know, more familiar with him. But we picked the dude. You know, I'm coming off a layoff, and uh, I don't get any soft touches at this point in my career. So we picked him because he's gonna bring it. He's got a reputation of going on the road and, and putting up a good fight, so he, he he's going to bring it for sure. I wonder if um if the UK will travel well to Oakland. They usually do. They do, yeah. United yeah. Kingdom in general. We, I was just at the um, Peter Quillen, uh, Andy Lee fight mm -hmm. in Brooklyn, it's and a good fight. Andy Lee's it was a good fight, and Andy Lee's from Ireland, and man, they they were out there. They were they out don't there. Play, man. Yeah, the the UK really doesn't mess around with their talent. They're rabid, man. They you know I mean we we got. Like just in the Bay Area alone, I got I got to compete with the Warriors, the San Francisco, you know, Giants, the 49ers, the Raiders. I mean, the, the A's. The list goes I mean, on. let's be honest. I'm a Raiders fan. It's not much competition. There for you, the Raiders. <laughs> you, got, you could take Oakland out the Raiders needs by something. I'm just right saying, now. just in general. But you know, the fans travel though. Like yes. it's not just in the specific city. But like in the UK, they got what cricket and soccer. It's huge now. Don't downplay cricket no, no, and I'm soccer. Not, it's but a I'm big saying deal. they have less options. So when they get a champion or somebody that's on the rise, man, they they go all in. Well, it's interesting yeah. you bring that up. <laughs> Rosenberg and I were just having a conversation about uh, Floyd Mayweather and Pacquiao, which is in mm -hmm. a couple weeks, and how you know a Mayweather week. is our week. Mayweather's the villain. And right. if he wasn't seen as the bad guy, if he didn't right. have this whole aura of people hating him, black people don't really support their fighters mm -hmm. like back in the day because there's so many other athletic superstars, right? Basketball, football. I mean, hell, you had Tiger Woods for a little while. Mm -hmm. You have musicians, Hove, yeah. the, your boss, yeah. who, you know, whatever. My so, partner, yeah. He's no, a part partner. I mean, come on. Partner. Is, he partner. doesn't tell him what to do. Like He's not partner, in the corner better. telling him what to do. My fault, my fault. I like partner better. I, I respect that. I respect <laughs> it. Um, so it's interesting because, you know, now Mayweather's seen as his villain, so... Mm -hmm. Over the last decade, he's gotten bigger and bigger purses because people hate him so much. And the opponents he goes up against, they hate him so much. Yeah. And it's almost like he had to fabricate that. I, I believe he fabricated that persona to get more purses because he had to mean something. Yeah. The Mexican fighters always get big pay-per-view. Yeah. Uh, Pacquiao always got big pay-per-view numbers because you know the, the, the Asian community and the Filipino yeah. community rally around. Yeah. But for yourself, <clears throat> do you have a hard time getting that fan base to rally around you? No, I mean, you made some tremendous points, um, and you and I think you touched on it. Like, you look at Pacquiao, he's got the Philippines. He's got a country behind him. Oh, I mean, you're talking in a huge country with millions yes. and millions and millions. You of look people. at maybe somebody that's in the ballpark, Canelo Alvarez. Yes. Mm. Mexican. He's got, he's got the Mexican fans behind him. Uh, Americans is tough, and sometimes specifically for African Americans, like you said, um, and that's the route Floyd chose. Floyd was first pretty boy Floyd, and I think he tried to, you know. He wanted to be finesse. He, he wanted, wanted to he, be. He tried to, you know, and, and, and I don't know if they accepted that. And, and you know, he switched up and became money man, became the villain. And I see even right now that sometimes writers and different people, they almost try to make me a villain. Mm. It, like, for example, I just came off of, you know, a year and a half of lawsuits and different things just, you know, with my former promoter and, just different things like that. And it was almost like I felt like, man, I'm fighting for my life and for my career here. But it was like, oh, Ward's being stubborn and Ward, like, hold up. Like, so I'm pushing back against the villain role because it's just not me. Right. It's you don't not want authentic. You don't want to and, embrace it if it's nah, not true. And you. it's like, I got, you know, my fans, like, it's not just the Bay Area, you know. And I say this with humility. Like, I've been New York, mm -hmm. tremendous fans in New York. The UK, all over. So and, and these are boxing fans, well, right? Because New well, York is an old school boxing yeah, course, town. Boxing fans, but even fans of me as a person, and that's what's important to me. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I would rather have ten thousand fans that are authentic that really rock with me than have twenty thousand. It's like, yeah, he cool, but I want to see him lose. Like half want half want me to lose, half want me to win. That's just me. I rather to me less is more in terms of just you know 
authenticity. So you're right. You broke it down about Floyd and what tends to happen, but I'm kind of pushing back on that, man, and I think that kind of makes me a little bit different. Well, we're obviously super excited about your fight that's going to come up June 20th, but Absolutely. we are not going to sit here and waste time. You're a boxing fan. You're a student of the game. So like everyone else, I'm guessing you will be plastered to either. You got to talk about it. Yeah, come on. We're not going to. Let's, 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 you're a fan. We got to talk we about it. Talk I want to talk about it. So uh, yeah, well, first, of all, first of all, where will you be watching next Saturday night? And then give us your thoughts on the fight. Man, I don't know yet. I'm trying to see. I'm trying to check on my. I may be working the fight, not for the net, not for the uh, pay per view broadcast, but but in some capacity. You know, I broadcast for HBO. Again, I won't be broadcasting. They'll probably use you know Jim Lampley. Um, but in some capacity, maybe maybe you maybe know, doing B some radio or BBC, some BBC something like BBC that. So, something. so I will be in the building. It looks like okay. Um, do you but, prefer that, or would you rather be at a fight party like just gather around a TV? No, like, everyone like else? personally, like I don't. I want to be like. Either I want a great seat, I want to be at the house. You sound like see, us. That's that is us. exactly. I want to know what's going on behind the scenes. I want to hear. What, what, I want to see what he's doing in the locker room. I want to see all of that. That's just me. If you're not gonna, be, a lot of people don't understand this. We had an. I had an opportunity to go to Las Vegas. Yeah. Okay. And shout out to HBO and Showtime. Love you guys for coming together and helping <laughs> make this happen. The situation that they wanted radio to do in order to do their fight was to promote the hell out of it and mm. not have a guaranteed seat. Mm. Not an option for me. Mm. I will be. I got my wife into boxing. My wife's very into sports, but really? she wasn't into boxing until she we got together. And now I took her to her first fight, Barkley, last week. I want to be with her yeah. for the most monumental fight yes. of our lifetime. Yes. This is for me. I said, and, and tell me how you feel about this. You know, a lot of people, when they promote a fight, they just instantly call it the biggest fight in history, and they yeah. rewrite history as, right. to a certain degree. To me, this is the most iconic moment I can remember in boxing since June 1997 when Tyson and Holyfield had the rematch. That rematch moment was... It's been over. It kind of got overlooked because of the bite. It yeah, became yeah, yeah. about the bite before the bite happened. It's a big deal. That night was a huge, huge right. deal. We don't get these nights that often. You don't. You don't get them that often. And you know, some people say, "Oh, this fight should have happened five years ago." Well, you got to take a second. They're making two to three times the money. Both fighters got a lot left in the tank, and it's actually more interest. Now and it's more of a spectacle now than it would have been. F so, in my opinion, it's happening at the right time. Now, if you get two fighters that are past their prime, they're making less money. Nobody really cares. Yeah, you should have happened five years ago. And, and let me just say this for the record: like they're making in excess of a hundred million dollars a piece. Oh, crazy! There's no losers in this fight. No, <laughs> no matter what. There's no losers. All right, in your opinion, Andre Ward, who's uh, here, Ebro in the morning, Rosenberg, will there be a, a Mayweather Pacquiao too? I don't know. It all depends on how the first fight goes, and to, to your point, like, that's what makes, like, right now it's arguably, from a spectacle standpoint, the interest, I mean, revenue standpoint is there, but from a matchup standpoint, maybe one of the biggest fights, if not the biggest fight in boxing, but what's going to make it be that and stay that for years to come is the way the fight turns out. I think no matter what, there's a part two. Uh, no but, matter what, when, I think no matter what, there's a part two, because it, Talk about Mayweather styles. Mayweather gonna go in there and knock out Pacquiao. That's not Mayweather. It hasn't been for a while, and he's not gonna stand there and punch it out it's with possibly. Pacquiao. He's gonna dance. Well, I, this is the thing though. Like, people don't give Floyd a lot of credit. He don't give a lot. No, of No, he credit. can. We know he, he can. can. Mm -hmm. We know he can. But he only is brawls. Really? Going. To. No, he brawls. In my opinion, you know much more than we do. But um, Floyd tends to brawl when he feels very comfortable doing. Which is so. smart, right? So we're he, not gonna fight when you want to fight. We're gonna fight. When I want to fight. Right. right. So Miguel Cotto, sure. Yeah. But, but he's not we, doing it with Pacquiao, I don't think. He right. knew he was faster than Cotto, so right. he knew if he mixed it up, he could get out of there. But you got to realize, even in the Cotto fight, like he did that for a second, and then he's like, let me get up off of that. Let me. <laughs> he got on his bike, because it's like, you got to be, that's how you survive. You don't get 48, 49, and 0. You don't keep an old fight in one way. And that's the only thing that concerns me about this fight with Pacquiao. Pac's got like, you know, I'm not saying he's not going to make adjustments. He's got a great coach in Freddie Roach. He's got well, one Floyd's style. Floyd's got like 10 game plans, uh -huh. man. And he's already like five steps up ahead, so it's not fair. Like It's like you racing, and he's way up there already. Can you talk about getting punched in your face harder than you it ever hurts, had in your I life? I don't like it. <laughs> That's but, why you don't do don't it very like it. much. But Pacquiao, we watched Pacquiao, and I was watching a fight at a party. Marquez. And when Marquez hit Pacquiao, everybody mm. was like, yo, screaming. And then the room went quiet because mm. Pacquiao wasn't real. getting up. It got real. And everybody was like, yo, is he breathing? Yeah. What's That's happening? That's what I thought, yeah. And then, obviously, when we, everyone knew he was okay, people started making the memes and making fun of him. Mm. But do you ever recover from a knockout like that? In your mind. Has it ever mm. happened to you? Have you ever nah. been laid out? Nah. 
I've never been I've in the never, amateurs. I've never been unconscious. I've never been knocked out. But, but I'm sure I, you know I've people got, who I've have. gotten hit with a good shot before. Like I, I I'm 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 gonna be real. Like and I and again I don't talk about this stuff usually. Who gave it to I'm you? I'm saving this. I can't tell you that. <laughs> Cause then I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to fight I'm, him. I'm gonna tell you what happened. Like I I've okay. gotten hit before. This is a true story. In a fight. And didn't remember how I got through like two rounds. Like it happened in this round and then two rounds and then the fight was over and I was like yo what happened of round six and seven <laughs> I mean I'm let, yeah, real no, talk like real. to this day I can't tell you did how you go I got back and through. watch it no never watched it to this day cause you don't want to think about it you don't want that in can't the back of your mind I just told myself that'll never happen again everything that's in my power that'll never happen again and, and do, what, you, do you know what you did that allowed yeah, it to say, happen what was the mistake man I think the mistake was like coming from the amateurs, the referee says break. Everybody relaxes and respects what, all right, you know, relax. Pro game is different, man. I came in with a gold medal. People thought I had a silver spoon in my mouth. So everybody's gunning for me. So ref says break. I look at the ref, boom, I get hit. Mm. And something disconnected and short circuited, man. And I fought off an of instinct for two rounds. And all I remember was getting my hand raised. And that's when I kind of came to. And I was like, Whoa! Never told that story publicly ever. When you're, first of all, we appreciate that. Second of all, when you're in that situation, I was at the at the fight a few weeks ago. Uh, this was the Danny Garcia fight. Some dude was behind us rooting for Peterson hard. It must have known him because he was screaming. Going with, uh, yeah, he was one of those dudes. Yeah, I heard people were like, I, I told my wife, I was like, we might have to leave. I thought you were going back because if someone walks in, they're like, um, the guy rolls in and he goes. He says to the guy behind him, and by, keep in mind, I'm paranoid in general. My wife's never been to a fight. My wife is a beautiful, dainty young woman. Right. We were sitting. We weren't sitting on the floor with Ebro. We had great seats, oh, but we were up man. in the riffraff. I mean, you know, I was in that second row you. lamping. You know what I mean? No, and I got to tell you, and I got to tell you, and I've had those seats as well. This was the best seat I've ever had for mm -hmm. a fight. It was like five rows in Good to seat. the crowd. Yeah. It great was seat. Perfect seat. Looking right at the ring. But you're amongst the riffraff, mm. okay? And boxing... Oh my God, I can't even imagine Oakland. There's going to be some riffraff, okay? Little There'll be some riffraff. So this guy walks in. He says to the guy next to me, who you, who you uh -oh. rooting for? Guys like Garcia. He's like, word, I'm Peterson. <laughs> and I was like, oh God, here we go. the line in the sand. Then I hear him say a minute later, someone's like, sit down. He goes, I'm not sitting down. Oh, man. I'm like, here we go. And the whole, and the whole time he's screaming, mm -hmm. keep the jab, keep the jab, mm -hmm. stay, get behind the jab. When your corner, mm -hmm. screw the audience, mm -hmm. but when your corner is yelling something at you repeatedly and mm -hmm. the commentators are all saying, he needs to do blank, mm -hmm. and we feel like the fighter just doesn't register yeah. it, are you hearing it when they're yelling at you in that situation? I I, I hear, I, like it fades in and it fades out. Like I hear him sometimes, like, and sometimes I don't. But it's a fight or flight situation. Man. <laughs> yeah. You, I mean, it's we can have all of the training camp can go great. And you get in a situation, you get hit with a shot like I just talked about. You ain't trying to hear none of that. Like it's you literally like, man, I'm trying to survive right now. Like and it's moments like that. And other times stuff is flowing. It's like, yeah, OK, I registered that and I'm going to do it. And it works. So, I mean, or I've had situations where my coaches, who's my godfather, you know, Virgil, he'll ask for something. And I'm like. Uh uh. You can just right sense that. I'm not in it. there. Trust me. It's not working. He, man, you got to go to the body. I'm like, man, he's covering up his body, man. He it ain't going to work. I got to go to the head. And we'll have moments like that. But nine times out of 10, what he's saying is right because he can see things. He you can can't. see what I can't see. Uh, we have Andre Ward here. He's 27 and 0. He won the gold medal. And he's, whoo. This guy's real. I like your talk game. I was surprised. You know, we talk to a lot of box boxers. Yeah, it feels like uh, you're not you're not stuttering and stammering. So you nah, still and I'm trying to stay com all the way completely away from that, man. Like I I I like literally want to have my faculties. I love boxing, but I don't love it that much. Like I want to be able to have this conversation right, right. after years. I retire. Well, it's funny you see a guy like Tyson, for example. We know Mike talks crazy because he's Mike, but in general, he's a guy who didn't get hit that much. Right. And as a result, he was doing a hit, yeah, exactly. So as a result, now Mike's almost fifty years old and. And he sounds basically he's solid, yeah. he sounds better than he's ever sounded yeah, to be true. honest and that's not very common and Mike's always been intelligent right right he's been underrated like he, Mike is smart he reads he, he's yeah. intelligent well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why are you gonna real old I joke? didn't say that man but no that's <laughs> so, you, so your path your path is you know um, at the end of this you want it to be full time commentary where would you like this to go yeah I don't know man I'm just kind of leaving that in God's hands man I mean like if I had to choose today I mean obviously commentary is I love it 
you know, I love it. I've, I've you know, served an internship at, at, you know, a local station back home at Comcast. Like, I want to know what's going on behind the scenes, like the people that are behind that. And you, you it know. seems like you like the business of this, too, because you were talking about a partnership with Rock Nation. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's important. Like, this is prize fighting, you know? Like, we fight for a prize, and I'm trying to get the biggest prize I can get because, like, I know, like, I've been an amateur for 10 years, and then now professional, I'm going on 11 years. Mm. And, like, I'm away from my family, you know, two, three months at a time for training camp. You know, people don't account for the training camps where I'm sparring two, three different dudes three days a week, taking shots, giving shots. Like, I have to look back when this is all said and done and say, man, this is this is something tangible that I have to show for all of this. So the business part, like, all of us fighters are doing a disservice if we don't worry about the business part. Like, I don't like when I hear, I respect it, but I don't like when I hear, I don't care how much money I'm making. Who am I fighting? Nah, bro. No, how much money? Look at that fine print. If you can't read it, get somebody that can. But do you feel like those fighters who say those things oftentimes are coming from circumstances where it's like, "Yo, I'm just trying to get my family out the hood. And it's I'm a, fighting. It's a place for I that. I don't have Excuse many me. options, and I'm going for it. It's a place for that. But if you, if you are more established, it's a place where you got to take what they give you. Yeah. But sometimes we get in a position where we can do it and we don't and, do it. Right. So look, um, rock. Uh, it's throne boxing. Throne uh, boxing. Andre Ward here is uh, signed to Hove and Rock Nation and all that. They're partners, though. Let's, yeah. let's be clear. <laughs> and uh, BET Networks is going to air your fight on yes. June twentieth, which yes. is, is a first for BET. The, the first. Who's who does BET have any commentary for this fight? All right, Still hasn't been decided. Yeah. Can you mention the name Peter Rosenberg? They won't. <laughs> BET won't put me on camera for anything else. Maybe boxing. Maybe boxing is it. Only there's only one. I want to say this right now, BET. If you're watching this, I want to do it. However, I insist that my uh, partner be Sita. <laughs> The animated girl. The animated girl. Now, I want to, fam. You just ruined any opportunity you what? had. Grand fine, opening, grand closing. Right me, there. me, me and Donnie. Me and Donnie Simpson. Me and Tigger. Cherry Carter. Me and Tigger. Cherry Carter. <laughs> Tigger, Tigger. Me and Big Les. Big, bring Big Les. Now, look, tickets go on sale today, 10 o'clock. Um, Wake up and get them. Yeah, you can get them at Ticketmaster. Throne Boxing will be on BET. It will also, I mean, why wouldn't it be on Title if you're a member of Title and what? you got that? Yeah. You can also watch it and stream it on Title. Yeah. They giving you some of that, some of those subscriptions. Nah, I'm not. You know nah, nah, get a couple percentages nah. off those. Nah, nah. You know I'm, I'm just happy to be a part of it, man. You know, just, good answer. Good answer. Yeah. And listen, he's got a Jordan check too. I don't know if you notice his outfit. Yeah, no, I see that. He's, 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 he's good. good. He's taking care of. I know why Hove is doing business with this guy. You see it? You see it now? Oh, he says man. the right I'm things. To learn, yeah. Yeah. You, you need to come. You need to come back whenever there's a big fight. We would yeah. love to have you come back and talk about the fight. Absolutely. Yo, give it up, Andre Ward, man, Oakland, California, U.S. Olympian, right there, U.S. Olympian gold medalist. Yo. He's up there with Ali, Sugar Ray. Who else is yeah, in that list of yeah, gold medal boxers? Greats, legends. Like that that's the thing, man. Like I'm the gold medal is tremendous, man. They, no matter what I do in my pro career, they can't take that from me. Like I'm in the book with some guys that are just Oscar ridiculous. De La Hoya got a gold Oscar medal. Yeah. Roy Jones should have got a gold medal in True. soul career. He got a silver. Floyd Mayweather, he got robbed, but he got a bronze medal, I think. So I mean, just all the greats that move on, they went through their process. There it is. Andre Ward. Thanks, Andre. Good talk, man. Thank you, man.